Today I stand in the heart of the Sayadris, in the land of coffee and spice and the wellspring of the Kaveri River. I am in Kurg in Karnataka. Kurg district, locally called Kodagu, is internationally recognized as an important biodiversity hotspot. One of the richest rainforest zones, these misty hills hold within them a mecca for insects and birds. You can spot trees full of beautiful butterflies. And sometimes at dusk, if you're lucky, you can even spot the ethereal lunar moth. This exotic expanse is home to the Kodavas or the Kuruks, a tightly knit community. There are only about 1.5 lakh Kuruks across the world. What gives Kurg a special flavor is its coffee and spice plantations. Kurg is the coffee district of India. Not only is coffee the world's favorite beverage, it's also very eco-friendly. Here in Kurg, coffee is shade grown, so trees like rosewood, giant uh, mahogany, uh, fig trees, they shelter the plantations, in turn shelter beads, uh, insects, birds and butterflies. Well, no wonder so many scientists and conservationists, they all want to come down here to Kurg and study this unique biodiversity. But the big question is, is everything alright in this coffee and spice paradise? Hi. Hi. Payal Molur runs Go Wild workshops, spreading awareness about so, wildlife. Big spider you're looking yeah. at. Oh, look at that. Look at that. She has been exploring this region for the last two years. Payal is a complete wildlife buff and absolutely inseparable from her handicap. I met up with Payal to check out some footage that she had shot here last year. This is actually the cardamom plantation, this whole place. See, this is how they kind of spray it. It was during the spraying of insecticide in one of the plantations here that Payal came across this shocking sight. Yeah, and this is the first bird I saw. This is the Indian pitta. And you can see how it's bobbing its head like that? You are like sitting right next to it. Well, it was here. It was right here. And it was not I moving. just picked it up. It not not moving, moving. It all. was too... I almost stepped on it. I didn't see it. I'll just show you one where... Yeah, this one. See, you can see this bird. You can see there against the bark of the yeah, tree. Yeah. And when it's trying to flutter up, it's got no control. In all, we saw about 18 birds. 18 birds. 18, yeah. And how many of them died? Only three survived. I think most of them we got dead. We didn't even get them live. Okay. And you can see it's not even gripping. It's its claws are like this. You know? It's not even, see? You can see. It can't even stand. My God. Yeah. All the blackbirds we got died. And there was one little bird we got. And that you can just see I'm holding it and it can't even open its eyes. Its head is just. Twitching. That died. Tell me when you were actually in this field, when, when, when it was getting sprayed, what was it like? Ghastly. It was really bad. I mean, I could feel. I was. I was like dying in there. I couldn't breathe. Okay. For two days, we kept it. We gave it glucose water. Kept it in a little box. And uh, on the uh, third day, we released it. Let go. So, do you think it's actually the pesticides? Because uh, there's no, not really major research here. It's something you found after they sprayed the pesticide, which is a possibility. 
I think so because um, there doesn't seem to be any other explanation to me from what I saw and what I've recorded because we saw them they were spring and then next thing we had these birds uh, dying on us okay. and uh, some other plantations when they had sprayed this people had told us that we've seen this happen where we've seen birds literally falling from the trees but I think uh, someone needs to come and take a very serious look at you know what's happening over here.